The China peak theory is complete nonsense. The modernization is not only one way, one path. Well, if that's a crisis, every country in the world should have a crisis. It will be a modernization with common prosperity. And this is yeah. what, what China has done. It's a miracle. Is China's economy going through a challenging period? Two of the world's leading economists, Professor Lin Yifu and Mr. John Rods, recently met to discuss this question. They examined the current economic situation, considered the controversial peak China theory, and discussed China's pursuit of common prosperity through high-quality development. I wrote about China's economy from the point of economic theory. Yeah. In 2005, I started to come to China, and I read uh, Professor Lin's books because I was so interested by this idea of the, the very, very original idea of comparative advantage. I've already told my wife I was very excited that I was going to be seeing him and doing an interview with him because I've got an incredibly high opinion of his research. Well, very kind of you to say that. And actually, the way I know you is through the same, same format because I read your you know, articles about China, and you were a very small number of Western people to have a very good understanding of the Chinese economy. There are so many misunderstandings about China. For example, uh, China peak, China collapse hypothesis have been so, you know, widespread. With more, here's our China correspondent, Steve McDonald. The world's second largest economy is struggling. The China the peak theory is complete nonsense. <laughs> um, Again, let's, let's look at the facts. Yeah. Let's take, if you take the whole period, over the period since 2019, China's economy grew over 20%. Well, if that's a crisis, every country in the world should have a crisis. Why has China's economy slowed down? There are two reasons, in my opinion. One is because the entire world economy has slowed down. Yeah. So therefore, China's lead is still very considerable compared to other countries. And the second one, which is a bit more technical, it's because China's net fixed investment has fallen quite considerably. It's, there is a great deal of discussion in China about consumption, and there is, it doesn't appear from the gross fixed investment that the investment has fallen a lot, but the depreciation yeah. level has risen a lot because China's capital stock is much bigger. Therefore, its depreciation each year is bigger. Net fixed investment has fallen in almost all countries, and therefore they've all slowed down. But the peak theory is just complete nonsense because they don't make any comparison with what's happened to them. So they say China's economy has slowed down, which is true, but, but the US economy has slowed down and the European economies have slowed down horribly. I fully agree with you. You know, the peak China theory is just nonsense. And as you said, the whole global economy has been slowing down. Now drop down to about 3%. China, it's the largest trading country, largest exporting country. Certainly, China was hit the most seriously because the export market growth rate has been slowing down. As a result, the export in China slowing down so much. Certainly, under the current situation, it hurt China's growth. And uh, secondly, you know, because of the slowing down in the global economy and uh, China need to do some adjustment in domestic economy. And uh, as long as China, you know, continue to explore new areas growth, China can maintain quite a handsome growth rate, especially in the new emerging sectors. China has been growing so fast to become global leaders, but actually China contributes to the global recovery. We know that since 2008, China contributes, contributed, has contributed about 30% of the global growth. China has been leading the global growth. So to say China has picked, I think they did not look into the overall picture. They only compared that China in the past grow at about 9%, now drop down to above 5 and 5.5% average. But that is a common situation in the global economy, especially due to the high-income country, advanced country, they have not uh, recovered. How to continue to you know, develop economy, to narrow the income gap with the advanced country 
has been a dream for all the developing countries. China also like to achieve this modernization in a Chinese way. It will be a modernization with common prosperity. How do you understand the connotation of common prosperity for all? What's your understanding of this? Common prosperity, first, you need to have prosperity. That means you need to grow dynamically to raise income and uh, to allow you have more resources to cope with the needs of the, uh, of the nation, with the needs of the people, and improve their well means And that is prosperity. And uh, in, after the Industrial Revolution, we see the Western country, on the average, the prosperity has been improved, but the distribution of income has been worsened. Some people, a small potential of people, they and possess uh, 80%, 70% of the increase in the income generation. But the rest of the population, they only get a small share. And uh, in a Chinese way, we hope that this, you know, in a process of income growth, the income distribution will be narrowed it will be reduced the disparity, but it's not an egalitarian system. Well, I think China is the most extraordinary economic development in the whole of human history. And I'm not saying that to be polite, mm -hmm. because I'm in China. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just a fact. In 1949, China was almost the poorest country in the world. Yeah. Now it has uh, prosperity by its own domestic standards. While I think the unevenness was inevitable, nothing could be done about it at the beginning. Yeah because of it, China's very low level starting point, but, but that would be very dangerous if it continued. Certainly, you are going to have some people, they made more contribution to the growth, they will you know, benefit a little bit more than the rest of the population, and uh, they will you know, create a job, they will diffuse the income to other people. And in this process, everyone can make progress simultaneously. Yeah. You, have, you have to take definite, precise measures yeah. in, or, in order to aid the poorest sections of the population, and this is yeah. what, what China has done. That's very true. Rural areas, not only currently the absolute poverty has been eliminated, but count on their competitive advantages in a facilitating environment. And uh, some rural area, they also have some culture. For example, recently, we have one county in Guizhou provinces. They have a culture of playing soccer, playing football. And that becomes an, you know, uh, an activities that they can develop and attract a lot of tourism for their sports and so on. That can allow rural area to enjoy the prosperity with the prosperity in the urban areas and uh, further in the process of China's modernization. This is what every country in the world wants. I, I, think, that the, I think that the path which China's taken is the one which other countries can follow. No. Not in the sense that they can mechanically copy, True. because they don't have the same population as China, they don't have the same history. Yeah. But the fundamental ideas, which is to make a transition from, from labour-intensive growth to capital-intensive growth, to increase the level of investment, to use their, competitive, their comparative advantage at a particular stage of development. You know, I've, I have a website in English which is called Learning from China. It's not called Copy China, because the, the fundamental processes are international. Today, the most important situation in the world, in my opinion, is in China, because if China can make the, continue what it's done and make the breakthrough to become a fully developed economy, which is so close, but still many challenges, this will improve the conditions not merely of the Chinese people, but it will improve the old conditions of the world. Development is the key and foundation for addressing any challenges. And China has abundant opportunity for development. And China also has the wisdom 
to continue our development through the cooperation between market, that is private sectors, and the state, that is the government, and to realize our dream of Chinese way of modernization.